So with that, uh, let me get started with the first agenda item. This is the fun one, uh, one where I get to see uh, someone else or something else uh, make uh, mistakes and uh, point out those mistakes. <laughs> so uh, let me set this up. So this is the last of the uh, conceptual questions we have in optics. And I thought there were some tricky questions here. Uh, let's see how uh, uh, let, let's see how well perplexity does. It's done well, well so far. So, um, and I'm actually more excited to uh, see how well perplexity does in answering uh, modern physics questions. That's where uh, GP, ChatGPT was wrong on certain things, but uh, we'll see. So let me just copy and paste this. And I believe, um, let me see how it pastes. Uh, okay, so. I don't think uh, it uh, pasted in the figure description. Let me see. Um, let me give that a little try. All right, so I think that's how I had to paste. Uh, description of, yeah. Oh, maybe. Hmm. Well, let me paste it in this way and let's see how perplexed the figure is that. It might ask me some follow-up question about um, the figure. Or not, if it already knows. So let me read the question and slide. Yeah, so with a lot higher end, the peak becomes sharper and sharper. Uh, yeah, yeah, interference pattern. So qualitatively, so why these changes a qualitatively explain. Um, I mean, um, like you could talk about uh, kind of diffraction central maximum. You know, I gotta tell you, I forget what I put in the model answer. Um, so qualitatively, uh, I think uh, like having more slits um, would reduce uncertainty <laughs> between each peak. Um, let's see. Um, so as the numbers in keeping the so quality changes occur, um, so yeah. So the changes occur mainly gets a, a sharper, um, narrower bright fringes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, increase the intensity of principal maxima. Yeah, that's fairly easy. Uh, more minima and secondary maxima, yeah, that's what you see kind of over here, these. And some number of uh, slits like these become so dim that you don't even think of these as secondary maxima. Uh, um, increase the sharpness of the pattern, which is kind of repeat of one there. Um, these changes occur due to principle of superposition, where the wave from which, I mean, sure, uh, but it, that's not really an explanation. It's just citing a, one of the principles that's involved. Um, when there are only two slits, the condition is relatively broad, aligned. Um, uh, I think that's too vague uh, as more slit. Uh, yeah, I think that's too vague. Um, like more stringent to how. Um, this must be precisely in phase to interfere constructively. This results in the narrowing of bright fringes and an increase in the... Uh, um, um, I mean, I guess it's good enough. Uh, I, I don't think it, I, I wouldn't put it as, at least not in these terms about uh, uh, broad and uh, stringent. Um, I might put it in the language of um, single slit diffraction, uh, how uh, having more slits is like having a wider slit in a single slit diffraction. You know, with a wider slit, you have a narrower, um, the, the central maximum, you have narrower diffraction pattern. I might uh, phrase in those terms, I think. Um, I, I actually do forget <laughs> how I put it in the model answer. Uh, I guess I could look. Uh, let me do that actually off the screen uh, to make sure that I didn't um, miss anything important. <laughs> Uh, you can kind of tell I don't do any prep for this. Uh, normally, me not doing any prep is actually totally fine. But um, 
Um, uh, I will say like a physics force is around the place where uh, not doing any prep um, um, isn't always a good idea. So I'm just uh, uh, checking. So I'm just uh, going over this question here, um, went through this, has decent answer, although this qualitative explanation. Eh. And I was saying that um, I think I might have worded it in terms of single slit diffraction pattern. Let me just double check the model answer that I put in and make sure that I didn't miss anything here. Uh, so I'm not going to share the model answer because, you know, it's the model answer. But I'm just sight reading it to see. Um, qualitative, you can explain this by pairing of the slits that are... Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to be reading it out loud. Um, I don't know. That's not really qualitative explanation. I don't think I actually like what's in the model answer, but it's fine. Um, what Perplex said is fine. Um, it, uh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> so N-slit interference, like uh, as itself, is not all that interest. Well, um, it, it's more um, instructive when you like do it in a programming thing where you can uh, do, show these patterns numerically. Uh, I think in a more conceptual kind of um, way, um, what's more interesting is the diffraction grading, uh, which is a limit of n solid interference. So, okay. Uh, let's see, features visible in the spectral diffraction grading resulting from, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought, didn't I already? Oh, you know what? This is a question that I asked, uh, I think last week, regarding single slit diffraction and or um, the what your textbook calls uh, double slit diffraction. And um, my kind of short answer here is, um, depends on what you mean by interference and diffraction, <laughs> because uh, um, they're, 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 these terms are so misused. Uh, but you do have to mention some features due to interference, like, uh, destructive interference that you see, you say th there's a kind of aspect of interference there. And in fact, with the diffraction grading, um, the features are, interference features are stronger in the sense that you can predict the position of principal maxima by um, using the slit separation. And that's kind of interference, not diffraction. Diffraction grading, in my opinion, is kind of a misnomer almost. So let's read perplexed answer. Um, both, yeah, from both. Um, diffraction occurs, multiple slits of the grading. And yeah, I, that connection I don't like. Um, multiple slits and spreading, I, I don't think there's a strong connection there. Uh, this is the initial spreading of light. Yeah, that, that I think is totally wrong. Uh, like, uh, you saw it with the um, grading you had in lab, like, there is a middle column that looks like a single slit, but that's actually diffraction grading. Uh, when you shine light through it, the pattern you see, like, looks nothing like a single slit diffraction. So this connection, I think, is definitely mistaken. Um, the interference, on the other hand, multiple slits, they interfere, leading to bright and dark. And with the diffraction grading, you don't have so much darker fringe as um, spots without principal maxima. And so um, I don't think this is really, like reference to darker fringe especially, can only be said by someone who didn't see diffraction grading pattern. Like what darker fringe? You've just got bright spots and everything else is just, you know, dark. So there's no dark fringe. Uh, the aspect of that can be akin to single slit diffraction is the initial. Yeah, that's repetitive and wrong. Uh, this spreading is necessary. Yeah. yeah um, so the what aspect of diffraction would it be? So your um, textbook, I think, actually talk or you know, it might not talk about power of the grading. Um, so with the diffraction grading, there's a kind of a resolution limit, um, like uh, the ne uh, nearest wavelength is you can tell apart uh, if from, um, uh, from a single diffraction grading. And it's sometimes called the power of a diffraction grading or a resolution limit. Let's see if we, uh, your textbook talks about that. Um, Diffraction grading and so on. 
um, application. So your textbook might not talk about that. I think that's the one thing I remember OpenStax missing. Uh, power. So let me just Google search power of diffraction grading. So resolving power of uh, gr diffraction grading. Oh, this is, by the way, a great website. Um, they do have good material. Um, so, so this is a formula for resolving power of diffraction grading that you can see in some textbooks that's not ours. And um, the way I could make sense of this formula is by thinking of um, this aspect of diffraction grading. So diffraction grading has some total width. And you can think of that with like a single slit, um, single slit of the single slit diffraction. And you can actually see a connection between that overall width of the grading and this narrowness of the principal maximum. Um, so that's what that question is trying to get at and perplexed. It just totally missed it. Either because I'm being unfair <laughs> to ask an open-ended question and expect a specific answer, which you know is unfair, um, or because uh, perplexed is not all that good. I, I don't know. It, but you know, I I will say I have seen these answers a lot, and if I had to guess, um, this probably comes from uh, like um, um, like Quora or some internet forum let's see uh is any of these links uh, one of the internet forums um or maybe it's coming from one of those um online textbooks because i could imagine it coming from uh this link here a uh, library text which is another oer uh, i think uh, this might actually coming from um, our textbook uh yeah i don't know um i, I feel like a uh, some of those answers are coming from elsewhere. Um, that's not a textbook. Seven, no, I, I don't know. All right, let me not waste the time with that. Okay, let me ask the next question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think I need a question reference. Let me just make sure it's copied right. And I think the uh, perplex will actually understand this fine, but let me Put it in a form a calculator will understand. All right, so higher resolution obtained in a microscope with red or blue light. Blue light, <laughs> the distance between atoms can visible light. No, oh. and I think it, uh, perplex will probably get it right. It's fairly standard, easy conceptual question. Blue light because the resolution is related to wavelength in the sense that uh, like uh, the diffraction limited resolution kind of sense and there's a, a dependence on wavelength and the, the shorter wavelength means you can resolve uh, sharp um, smaller features. Yeah, so yeah, precision of mirror blue light provides, yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, I, I guess X-ray does other things too. Um, but uh, uh, there are contexts where people like, you know, the, the, so one of the reasons an electron microscope can work a lot better than visible light microscope is because you can get electron wavelength, which we'll talk about when we get to quantum mechanics. You can get electron wavelengths to be a lot shorter than visible light can be. Uh, so when you make a visible light that short, it's an X-ray and X-ray has different properties and you can do different things, but certain things that you would do with the visible light, you can't do with X-ray. So visible light cannot be used because it's much larger than this distance. Yeah, that's a, a 0 0.1 nanometer, which is much, much shorter than this. And if you got light or electromagnetic radiation to be this wavelength, it, that would be X-ray. Might even be hard X-ray. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, good, good answer. Um, yeah. All right. Resulting power of refracting. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the um, refer, uh, relating to the diffraction limited resolving power. Uh, what are the advantage? More intensity. <laughs> that's a big one. Um, I think that's basically it. More intensity. Um, so actually, especially in radio uh, telescopes, uh, there are kind of the arrangement of antennas where you can get that resolving power of a basically Earth-sized detector. You know, have a kind of radio telescope on opposite sides of the Earth, 
uh, they correlate them in a way they, there's some fancy electronics going on there then in terms of resolving power you can get the size of the earth but you wouldn't collect the same amount of uh, starlight or uh, you know astronomical uh, radio signal um, that you would with an actual earth-sized uh, antenna so increase yeah yeah wait wait um that is actually um no 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 this is wrong um the brightness uh, is not related to the resolving power in this sense the diffraction limited resolving power is not about the brightness it's about you know diffraction it's about wave nature of light this is wrong uh, beyond the yeah this is right and um this statement is wrong uh, the larger aperture uh, uh limits how much diffraction how, how much spreading of light occurs that's why you have better resolving power uh, and like gathering power yeah the rest is fine so yeah yeah the strict strike out these two first two sentences the rest is fine um, yeah ah, there's no citation here <laughs> all right so those are the conceptual questions this week last two conceptual questions for optics um sorry this took a little longer than i anticipated um,